My name is Summer with Summerly Design Co. And in today's video, I'm gonna give you five tips to improve your sock knitting. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, my first tip is an easy one, and it also happens to be a lot of fun. In order to become a better sock knitter, you need to knit a lot of basic socks. I'm talking month after month, <laughs> churn out a lot of basic socks. This helps you in a variety of ways. You can knit them in any color. You can do stripes, you can do solid colors, you can do different colored heels, cuffs, and toes to make them interesting. They don't have to be boring just because they're basic socks, but the reason why knitting a lot of basic socks helps improve your sock knitting skills is because you become familiar with the construction of the sock. It doesn't have to be stored up here, it can be stored in your fingers. It becomes muscle memory. Your fingers automatically know what to do so you don't even have to think about it. Um, it also helps you tighten up your tension. When you are new to knitting socks, when you first start knitting socks, your tension is going to be kind of loose, maybe even a little all over the place if you're not used to knitting on such small needles with such small yarn. So the more socks you churn out, the tighter your tension is going to get. Knitting a lot of basic socks also helps you become familiar with the sock knitting method that you enjoy the most, whether that's double pointed needles, magic loop, using two circular needles, or even tiny circular needles. Whichever method is gonna suit you the best, you're not really gonna know unless you knit a lot of basic socks and try some different things out. Additionally, there's more than one way to knit a basic sock. There are a multitude of cuffs you can use, many different heels, and in order to figure out which ones you like to knit and which fit your foot best, you've got to try them out by knitting a lot of basic socks. My book, The Sock Project, chapter three, there is pages and pages dedicated to the beauty of the basic sock. I give you a lot of different cuff recipes, heel recipes, so that you can kind of try them out and see what works best for you. So that's a great place to start if you need some good basic sock recipes. And again, basic socks don't have to be boring. You can do stripes, you can do solids, you can mix it up with the colors on your cuffs, heels, and toes, but knit a lot of them. And at the end, not only are you going to be a better sock knitter, but you're also gonna have a drawer full of colorful, beautiful socks. All right, tip number two block your socks. <laughs> a lot of people, when they finish knitting a sock, they just wanna cram it onto their foot, and I completely understand, I get it, you're excited, you wanna wear the sock, but blocking your socks is important for a couple of reasons. One, they actually do feel and fit better after a good blocking. Blocking your socks is also really simple. You simply fill up a little plastic tub or your sink with some lukewarm water, a dollop of wool wash, you soak your sock in that little soapy water for about 15 to 20 minutes or longer if you forget they're in there, which I've done that too. <laughs> it won't hurt them, don't worry. And then once you've soaked them, you pull them out, wrap them up in a towel, stomp on them, get some aggression out while you're at it so you can get all that excess water out, and then pop them on a sock blocker to dry. I usually lay mine under a bed with a fan pointed at it to help them dry faster. There are so many cute sock blockers out there, cute wooden ones, wire ones. I just like these cheap, ugly, <laughs> Blue plastic sock blockers from Knitter's Pride. You can get them at your local yarn store on Amazon. I'll have a link to them in the description of this video if you wanna check these out. I love these sock blockers. I feel like they're gonna be here forever and would survive multiple apocalypses. <laughs> so these are my absolute favorite. Blocking your socks is not just for aesthetics. Yes, your finished sock is gonna look a lot prettier once it's blocked, but it's also gonna feel a lot softer. Blocking helps those stitches relax. You'll notice when you're done knitting your sock that it looks very lumpy. Your stitches are a little wiggly looking. Once you soak them in that water with the wool wash, those stitches relax, they snuggle up next to each other, and they look and feel nice and even once they're done blocking. Do you have to block them every single time that you wash your socks? No, you could, but you don't have to. Once I've blocked my socks, typically I'm just gonna put them in wool wash and water and then lay them out flat to dry from there on out. 
but that first time after you finish knitting them, blocking really does kind of set those stitches. And it's really important for our next tip. Tip number three, you want to match your sizing to your tension. And how do you know what your tension is? That can be a question for a lot of knitters who are struggling to understand why their socks don't fit whenever they knit a particular size and think that they should fit and then they don't. Your tension is how tight or how loose you knit. So once you've blocked your sock, we can then examine this sock for clues to determine how tight or how loose we knit. So basically you're just going to take a measuring tape, you're gonna lay your sock out flat, and then you're going to count how many stitches you get in a horizontal inch of knitting. If you're a really tight knitter like me and probably have anxiety problems on top of it, uh, you're gonna get between nine and 10 stitches per inch. If you are a looser knitter, you're probably somewhere between seven and eight stitches per inch. Why does that matter? Whenever you are determining what size sock to knit from your pattern, the first thing you usually do is measure your foot around the ball of your foot. And that's going to give you a measurement somewhere between seven and 10 inches probably. And from there you choose the corresponding size in the pattern. My patterns are always usually four sizes. Sometimes I include kid sizing, but a standard sizing is usually small, medium, large, and extra large. A small would fit a person who measures seven inches around the ball of their foot. Medium would be eight inches around the ball of the foot. Large would be nine inches and extra large would be 10 inches. But what if you fall somewhere in between? Let's say your foot measures eight and a half inches around the ball of your foot. What size are you supposed to pick, the medium or the large? Well, your tension will help determine that sizing. So if you are a tighter knitter, you would definitely want to knit the larger size, the size large. If you are a looser knitter, you would definitely want to knit the smaller size, the size medium. Because if you knit loose, you're getting more fabric because your stitches are bigger. If you knit tight, you're getting less fabric because your stitches are smaller and tinier. So that's kind of how that works. It's pretty simple. It can also help determine what size you should knit even if you don't fall in between sizes. If you measure eight inches around the ball of your foot, but you find that knitting the size medium, the sock's still too loose, it's because you're a looser knitter. So for your net, next sock, you should probably size down and knit the size small. And again, knitting all those basic socks, that's what's giving you the clues to figure all of this out so that you can get the appropriate sizing and figure out what size you should be knitting. So that's how you match your tension to your sock size so you can figure out the best size, best stitch counts so you get a better fit and you don't end up with baggy loose socks that kind of bunch around your ankles or socks that are so tight you can barely get them on, they squeeze your foot, they squeeze your calf and they just feel in general very uncomfortable. All right, tip number four. And this one, we're going back to tension again. Tension has a lot to do with how good your socks look and how well they fit. And for this tip, I want you to try and tighten up your tension. If you're a looser knitter, getting seven stitches per horizontal inch, try to tighten it up. We, I think the goal would be nine stitches per horizontal inch. That gives you really, really tiny, tiny, tight stitches. And the tighter and tinier your stitches are, the more durable your sock is going to be. Depending on my anxiety levels on a given day, my tension is anywhere between nine and a half to 10 inches per horizontal inch. If you have bigger stitches because you're a looser knitter, you're gonna find that your socks wear out a little bit faster and they're also going to look not quite as neat as if your tension is a little bit tighter. So if you can get your tension tightened up, that's not only going to improve the appearance of your sock, it's also going to make them a lot more durable. How do you tighten up your tension? Most of us, whenever we're knitting, we're just kind of zoned out and we're doing what we do. In order to tighten up your tension, you need to make a conscious effort to pull on that yarn a little bit tighter as you knit. So at first, this is going to be a conscious decision on your part with each and every stitch. But the more you do it, 
it's going to become muscle memory and then you won't have to think about it at all. So this is a situation where you would want to knit a pair of basic socks and you would really want to focus on those socks and make sure that you're pulling that yarn tighter than you normally do, really focusing, really paying attention, trying to ignore your family or friends, not watching the show on Netflix, not putting on the audio bug, but focusing solely on the sock in front of you to make sure that those stitches get really tight. And again, the more you do this, it's going to become muscle memory and you're not going to have to think about it. And then you can go back to knitting basic socks, barely paying attention while you zone out to Netflix or talk to your family or friends or listen to an audio book. All right, my final tip, tip number five for this video anyways, I'll definitely be back with more helpful tip videos in the future to help you improve your sock knitting. But for this video, tip number five, avoid variegated yarn. <laughs> Avoid variegated yarn when you're knitting pattern socks. So once you move on from basic socks and you start knitting socks with a lot of lace or cables or complicated texture, don't use heavily variegated yarn. And I know this is a personal choice and some of you are probably screaming at the TV or the computer screen right now and saying, I love variegated yarn and I'll do what I want. <laughs> Fair enough, if you love variegated yarn no matter what and you wanna use it on your patterned and textured socks, go for it. But in my personal opinion, if you've gone to the trouble to knit a beautiful lace pattern or a beautiful cable pattern or a really complex texture pattern, the more variegated the yarn is, the harder it is to see that pattern. It just looks kind of muddy. You can kind of tell there's a pattern in there, but really the yarn is competing with what you just knit for all the attention. And usually in my experience, if you're using variegated yarn, the yarn wins. <laughs> and you notice the yarn, you don't necessarily notice the really beautiful cable lace or textured pattern that you just spent a lot of time knitting. So. I know this kind of yarn captures our attention on Instagram. It looks really beautiful in pictures. It looks really beautiful. Oh, my hair today. <laughs> I should have never done a side part. Um, it looks really, really beautiful, all skeined up. And I love the look of variegated yarn when it's knit up in more of a simple sock, like a basic sock or rib socks or a really, really simple texture pattern. It looks great. But when we're talking about cables, lace, or more complicated texture patterns, the variegated yarn is gonna compete with that pattern for attention and the yarn's gonna win and the whole thing is going to end up looking muddy. Again, in my opinion, at the end of the day, you do you. <laughs> but I definitely think your socks will look better if you stick to tonals, solids, lightly speckled yarns when you're going for the cables, lace, and texture patterns. So those are my five tips to improve your sock knitting today. I hope that these were helpful to you. I will definitely be back with more sock knitting tips. This is just volume one in a series of sock knitting tip videos. I'm also gonna be back next week with a video giving you inspiration and showing you how to make basic socks that are anything but basic. Basic socks don't have to be boring and I've got some really beautiful socks knit up that I can't wait to show you. So I'll be dropping that video next Friday and I'll put the link to that in the description below the video once it's live. You can also check out my book, The Sock Project. If you're looking for a reference library that has a ton of basic sock recipes in it for you to try out, it's got tutorials, it's got tips, it's got tricks, it's got different heels, different cuffs, and a lot of inspiration for you to experiment with knitting basic socks. You can find all of my sock knitting patterns on Ravelry and on my website, and you can find all of that information and the links in the description below the video, along with my email, my social channels, everything you could possibly want to know. So uh, that's it for today and I'll see you next week.